The argument I've heard against the Employee Free Choice Act, which I certainly don't agree with, but I'd like to hear you just so we can flesh it out a little bit, is that it's undemocratic, is that it forces people to join unions. It's a way in which unions can bully people into uh, joining their organizations. What would you say to that kind of uh, well, criticism? Well, on the bully question, who do you feel more bullying from, your boss? Or your coworker, <laughs> right? Know, yeah. Now, again, I'm not saying there couldn't be some coworker that sort of pushes people a little bit to sign a, a union card. That happens, right? But people don't have their livelihood at stake related to their coworkers. They do have their li- livelihood at stake related to their boss, right? So, uh, you know, I think the real bullying that we have to avoid is the employer bullying, because you know it happens. I've done hundreds of presentations and I say to people what would happen to you if you tried to organize a union in your workplace and across the board everyone says well I'd be fired right now that's what people collectively believe now whether it's true or not the fact that everyone believes that puts this incredible chill on organizing so we've got to find some alternative to that and so the alternative that's proposed is that if the majority of workers sign cards saying, I'd like to have a union, then they get to decide how to do that. They can either uh, say that the employer should just recognize them and they go ahead and negotiate a contract, or they can say, no, well, we'd like to have some other process. And But again, it puts the decision back in the hands of the workers and not in the employer's hands. So, uh, and, you know, and, and democracy doesn't happen just one way, right? For many years in this nation, in New England, we had town hall meetings, right? Uh, and, and so that was the way that you had democracy. And so this collecting of the cards where workers get to sign cards, that's another form of democracy. You know, the first uh, place I ever worked was a factory that was a non-union shop. I did some uh, mostly inventory, but a little IDOD grinding, a little uh, etching. Uh, it just kind of, it, We made parts for uh, Chryslers. Uh, we made bushings for Chryslers. And it was a non-union shop, and uh, I really wish it was a union shop, but unfortunately, the uh, boss was my dad. Uh oh. So uh oh. <laughs> you're really not going to be able to organize that unless I wanted to be living on the street. Uh, so, so if this uh, problem is so prevalent, why don't we hear about it in the media? Well, I, again, I think it's uh, it's probably two uh, two sides on this. One, uh, I, I would say that unions haven't always done the best job of telling their own story and thinking creatively about how to get stories into the media. But probably more important, um, you know, if you look at the media in this country, there are now, I think, two labor reporters left in the country, right? There isn't one in Chicago. There is no labor reporter in Chicago. And so when you see stories about labor, they often describe labor union bosses. Oh, come on, right? You know, it's just, it, it's, it's got a pejorative slant to it in the media because, you know, we have to be clear about who owns a lot of the media. Right, exactly. All right, Kim, uh, one last question for you. Again, we've been speaking with Kim Bobo. She is the founder and executive director of Interfaith Worker Justice. Again, the local Chicago chapter, Chicago Arise. You can check out that organization as well. Interfaith Worker Justice, you can find out more about them at iwj.org. Uh, she's also a columnist for Religious Dispatches. We have direct link to Religious Dispatches at the front page of our website. She's the author of Wage Theft in America, Why Millions of Working Americans Are Not Getting Paid and What We Can Do About It. It's published by the New Press. We have direct link to the New Press web page at their website where you can purchase uh, wage theft from them directly. Uh, Kim is going to be speaking at 11 o'clock today down at the Printers Row Lit Fest over at the Books and Media Stage at University Center in the Lake Room. She's going to be speaking with John Jeter and another past guest on our show, Thomas Gehagen. Uh, one last question for you, Kim, and it's the question we love to ask. You might hate to answer. Sometimes it just blows up in our face. It's the question from hell. Are you ready, Kim? I'm ready. All right, so... Saturday, June 27th, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., Carrie's Lounge, 2251 West Devon. We'll be doing the meet and greet fundraiser. All net proceeds is going to go to Interfaith Worker Justice. Again, people can find out about it at iwj.org. Why should people be drinking and giving money to Interfaith Worker Justice? Hardworking people, why should they give money to you? 
because we are doing a fabulous job helping stop wage theft and support the rights of workers to organize unions, and we are terrific. And so your money couldn't be better used anywhere else but than giving it to Interfaith Worker Justice. All right, then I got a better question from Al for you. <laughs> All right, so let's say you're starting a business. Considering, uh, let's even go back. Uh, let's go back two years. You're starting a business. You're not somebody who's concerned concerned about the morals or the ethics. You're somebody who is just bottom line oriented. And, and I want to go back to the Bush administration because, you know, right now there is some promise within the Department of Labor. You're starting up a business. Would you, as somebody who is just considering the bottom line, participate in wage theft? In the long run, it is not good for you because, one, your employees will not feel good about you and will not stay if they have an opportunity to leave. Uh, secondly, you are risking getting caught, and in this new environment with the new Secretary of Labor, uh, you could well uh, pay significant penalties. Thirdly, your workers could um, organize a, a lawsuit against you, and if they do, you will pay significantly. So in the long run, it is better uh, to pay workers fairly. Even a few years ago, even when you were back in the Bush administration, it's... Uh, Back in in the Bush administration, you wouldn't have had the risk of getting caught by the Department of Labor, uh, but you could well have gotten caught in terms of a lawsuit, and you're not likely to have particularly happy employees. And, and staff turnover is really costly for organizations. Kim, it's a pleasure having you on the show. I'm looking forward to meeting you face-to-face on June 27th. Uh, thanks so much for being on our show this morning. Uh, thanks to the uh, stunningly handsome Danny Postal for helping us out, <laughs> as well as the incredibly gorgeous Ann Sullivan over at uh, uh, New Press. Thank you very much for being on the show with us this All morning. All right. Thanks, Lode. All right. Take soon. care. Bye-bye. Bye.